This DJ and TV show is sponsored by DJ Event Planner, Electra Voice, DJ Trivia and DJ Bingo, ProX Direct, NLFX Pro. Promo only. Odyssey cases. Perfect portals. Instant DJ requests. And our DJ and TV insiders. This is John Young from DJ and TV. Thanks for watching. Welcome, everybody. Welcome out to Monday night to Sean. You're back to your old skills. Thank you so much. Oh, well, you know, I could have. Why else did you go? Oh, by the way, we got to go now. Yeah, um, yeah. Already said <laughs> hopefully go. everybody's having a great Monday night. Um, I know some of you probably had the game on. Like, I, I do. It's, it's like right there. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I had to install a TV just because <laughs> of, like, things that happen. And I feel like I'm, I'm in a world isolated from everything if i don't have something going but the, anyway the only reason i'm um, watching tonight's game would be so that way i could follow the conversation with mike walter that's the only reason <laughs> i'd watch tonight's game that would be it otherwise i really don't care well i i will say this for those of you that haven't seen did not see ben stowe's commentary related to the vikings game um and i know john sympathizes being you know being a, a vikings fan although he won't admit it like 99 percent of the year um <laughs> is you know well, there's always next year. His Ben's son finally said, "There's always next year," and Ben learned that you know, his son realized already that he kind of got to just. It just yep, suck that it is up. that is our mantra, and it's been that way for a long time. I just think I just think the Vikings hate the Packers so much they don't want to win the Lombardi Trophy. <laughs> I, I'm going to go with that one. I think that's you know we have our <laughs> principles. We're not going to. We just don't like the Packers and Vince Lombardi. Yeah, we're not going to. We just don't want that. We don't want that at all. Well, tonight, gang, is question and answer night. And we have a lot of questions that are going to be kind of based around that getting started as a DJ. And we're going to be answering some of the questions from that context. Because, well, we've been there, done that, made the, made the, made the mistakes. And hopefully, if you're getting started, uh, some of these questions may help you avoid some of those mistakes. Um, we're going to have our chat room, the uh, chat. We should put that YouTube link in the chat. Uh, for those of you out on Facebook or, or out on uh, any of the other areas we are broadcasting to, I'm just putting the YouTube link in there. That's the one where we're going to be kind of mainly watching the chat. So if you would like to go and ask questions or share some of your answers, that's the place to go do it this evening. Okay, we're good. We're there. Gentlemen, are we ready? So, no, we got to okay. do, do something first, real quick here. Oh, real, yeah, real yes, that's right. That's right. I mean, because you put the link in, and I think it's really worthwhile that we we give a little plug to our man MJ. Um, his book is finally out. He's been talking about it. It feels like forever. Um, it is a good read. All right, I, I know I used it for a table leveling device, <laughs> that but was, that was only temporary. That was good because then I got another book to to take its place. But no, if you get a chance, check it out, and and there is the link in the chat. So, yeah. Give him some love. Give him, give him a pick up on the book. Yes, and with the link uh, is in the chat. And if you're watching this later, it's the very first uh, part of the description of this video. You'll see the link for MJ's book. Click on that, and you can go and it, you can buy it and get it sent right to you. Or I believe he has it, like Kindle and audiobook. He's got it everywhere. It seems. I think he's he's like really pretty progressive with that whole process. I mean, I'd have been like a coloring book would have been as far as I would have gone. Stick figures. Yeah, maybe not even not <laughs> too, too advanced. So, all right, let's put a marker in here for our first question, and we'll be right back with that first question. First question tonight is talking about lighting. Someone had posted that they were kind of coming from the club world, and they were wondering to get started with lighting for their wedding world that they wanted to move into. What would we or what would people recommend for that? So, gentlemen, lighting to get started. Where do you go? If 
spite of humorous that we were just having this conversation right before we came on about lighting and frustrations. Um, I, I'm a big believer in just wash lights. Uh, it, I'm, I don't like the idea of the the dot effects and the and the definitely not the lasers and strobes. You kind of have to be a little bit careful of. Plus, if you if you get software, you can emulate some of the strobing type effects. So I'm a big believer in, in the wash types effects. The four bars from Chevet are nice. Um, you've got, you've also got, I don't know if the dot pars from ADJ are still around. I haven't heard much mention of them, but it's kind of that same style where you're just kind of having a nice wash light. If you do like the ability to have effects, I would say step up to the gig bar. Um, more specifically, the new gig bar move. It's going to be a little bit of money that you're going to be shelling out, but you're going to get a lot of ability and a lot of effects and the lights are brighter in the ILS, the new one than the old version. But Cubby, you got something else. <laughs> well, yeah, I do have the Chevet MTX sticks, but if I was coming originally from club work into um, weddings and I didn't have a large budget just yet, I would probably do the, I'd do the same as you get the wash lights. Um, I learned how to use them. Um, no spin and pukes during the first dance and formal dances. Learn how to use them so it's just a nice wash that it doesn't either wash out the bride's dress and or, like you said, the lasers all over their faces during the first dance because photographers will hate you um, if you, you know, if you tend to put too many effect lights during during the formal dances. Um, but simple wash, you know, I love the, I started with the Chevet gig bar myself. Um, I really enjoyed it, moved up to the gig a little later, and then I got the Chevet MTXs. And I, I think that that can't be overstated. The idea of learning how to run your lights properly and running them properly for the events. And I say the, 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 there's two is that you can control lights with the remote control or you can just have them plugged in and let them go. But if you're using a remote control, especially if it's a multifunction light, you can do things, make it a more make, focus. The wash can run for a while or this, whatever. So utilizing the light to its greatest ability and then making it work for the event properly. So when I'm making an announcement, I don't want lights going at a million miles an hour. Uh, Cubby just mentioned some great little things, literally to the point where you could go through and make kind of a little guideline or you take some of the little tips of what people have talked about when it comes to lighting and make that little cheat sheet for you and keep it there because there's times where where when I was first getting into lighting with my shows, I would have the lights and they, I'd be making an announcement and they're going boom, boom, because they were, they were basically on kind of a timer. And they were going, or I'm doing a slow song, and the lights are going really, it's like, no, I want my lights to go and enhance the situation. I don't want them to compete with the situation. I want them to enhance the situation. So really, that's, I think, Cubby, that's a great angle is to learn how to run them properly. And I'm, I have to go with Dan with the idea of the wash lights are just so universal, and they are age-wise, they can work it makes the room a, a color so that the younger folks, it gives them like, ooh, this is kind of cool. And it doesn't uh, put those beams in the eyes of uh, grandma and grandpa to the point where they're like, yeah, this is like looking at headlights and I'm going home right now if you run them properly. So well, I'm out. I got my good question for the night. I'm out. So yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't have any other good ones. I'm kidding. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. He's already done for the night. That's it. That's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible. OK, let's go to our second question of the night. So our next question is talking about music. When you're just getting into it these days, where are you going to get that music library that a lot of us, you know, purchased via CDs a million years ago? Cassette tapes? No. Records? No. Rocks and stone? No. But anyway, if you're starting out, where would you recommend them to uh, go to start building that music library? And Cubby, I think I, you're going to start us off with this one if you can. I like to use legal services like promo only. Um, they they don't have a backlog of it, but if I'm starting, I would buy some CDs that were like greatest hits of the 80s, 90s, 2000s, um, and kind of build my library that way. But I'd always subscribe to uh, a legal software service, Light Promo Only, um, that can provide you. Uh, you can do a monthly subscription if you're um, just starting out and can't afford a weekly subscription. Um, but I like to support people that support the industry. Um, and so, uh, I've worked with uh, promo only for a lot of years and love support them. Um, and I love their, I, they have videos, they have, you know, picks of the week and they have all the new ones, uh, to get a backlog. Like I said, I, I would probably, 
I would because I started so long ago. Honestly, I have them. Yeah. Uh, but if I was starting new, talking to a new DJ, I'd, I'd grab the best hits of the '80s, best hits of the '90s, um, type things like that that you'd use over and over again, and watch the top 200 charts from DJ Event Planner uh, and see what's being played. Um, as far as some of the older songs, make sure you have those. Uh, the DJ Event Planner uh, is a software that I use that always produces the top 200 and the top 80s and 90s. And so I'd watch those lists. Um, they tend to never change the 80s, 90s, and 2000 hits. They kind of always right near the top, but just make sure I had those hits. And uh, I think I think you'd be safe as you're starting out um, with that type of a that type of a music library. So one thing I'll jump in, Dan, before um, Cubby mm-hmm. mentioned that that promo only does not have a back catalog, and that is a big thing with any legal music service is that they can only offer you as a new subscriber to their services in the audio, the MP3 format. They can only offer you a couple of months back, even if they can go back. It might be 45 days now. It's, that has been something that has changed over the years, not in the last few years, but it has changed from what it used to be, where we could go to some some of these and get. Four, four back years worth of music. They cannot do that when it comes to audio. Video is a different story. You can go and buy the best of videos uh, from promo only all the way back through their whole entire catalog, which is one way to get some of those back hits where you can go buy like from promo only the all time party hits uh, DVD. It's got a lot of great stuff on there. Today you would get it by a pool and you download it and then you could literally rip the the audio from that video music video or you could just leave it as a music video whatever you want to do but that would be one way uh to get it and it would be completely legal for you to use and you're supporting a company that again supports the industry so that's why some companies that have a back library of mp3s from five to ten years ago not legitimate companies within uh, the music industry Dan, what so, would you so recommend? So my, my direction I was going to say is, you know, make, so, make sure you meet somebody in the back alley and buy the Platinum series off of them. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, for that those would... of you that have been around, you know what I'm talking about. But for, for the new guys, there was this there was this system, like, at, what was it, 30 years ago now, maybe? Oh, to at least 20-something, yeah. um, where it, it had all of those songs that you would ever want in a series, and it was very... Uh, at the time, everybody jumped on it, and since then, it became illegal. So um, that's why I said the back alley piece. But no, in, in all seriousness, I, I love the ideas. Both of them you know, spoke very highly of some great services that they can offer. One additional piece that I would do or two additional thoughts I would do to kind of help with this process, because you're just starting out. You don't, you know, if you're subscribing to a, a pool of some sort and you're, you know, you're spending, you know, 40 50 bucks in that a month and then you've got this other cost it's hard to try and grow that catalog fast enough so i would take exactly as cubby said take those top lists and and really kind of stick to the top 10 and maybe go hit up amazon or go hit up itunes before they stop selling their music and just buy you know buy those individual mp3 tracks but then i would also go one extra step and and i would go into that streaming service that virtual dj and some of these other ones have that has the ability to kind of flesh your catalog out while you are building it up. I would not do that long term. I I know there are some that are just like technology is there, you're fine. And very well you might be. But when you're starting out, you got to do something to be able to kind of fill that gap if you will. And this is one of the things you can use to kind of fill that gap and then as you get completely self-reliant or you go to a venue that has no Wi-Fi, you're you're already okay yeah i think the i think the best spot i think well you can still buy from apple but you have to do some things with it amazon i think right now is your is your best spot take those lists go buy the go buy the songs you can you could take a thousand dollars and i know it's a lot of money but boy you can get it for a thousand dollars you can buy you know 700 some songs and that will take you pretty much everywhere you need to go if you take those lists. Um, another another thought, uh, let me put a shout out to, uh, to Jim Cerrone here. Jim Cerrone is is a music programmer, and he's a radio guy who used to be the, the director, music director for his uh, different stations that he's worked at over the years. And he's gone out on Spotify, and he is making the Jim Cerrone's ultimate playlist for a variety of different categories. And it's a fabulous uh, little little set of playlists he has because I think he's got the 80s and the 90s. And he's taken this, this playlist of like the best of. And that, that would be really where I think I would start nowadays is take Jim's list and go and buy all those songs. Because they, he does such a nice job and has such a great, a great mix of, of, um, 
literally Saturday, uh, we needed to have have uh, music in a location, and we couldn't do anything beyond a cell phone, cell phone, Spotify, and it was a remote location, and it was playing Jim Cerrone's ultimate yacht rock play <laughs> party, or his, his his cocktail uh, yacht yacht rock uh, list. So, uh, yeah, find find somebody that does. Uh, it, uh, that is into that area and you guys will really be uh really be happy to follow what they've done uh with that because he's he's got a great uh, great great feel for that so okay John, if you could i got i got one more one more plug that oh, i yeah. gotta do for for somebody else so um a friend of our a friend of ours with dj and tv matt campbell yeah. um he also so my wedding songs Right. So he just got his book. Like it was like I was it was buying book week for Carpenter. Wow. Um, so he put this book out as well. This is no joke. This is just like chop full of playlists, different styles, very similar. Um, some of them reminded me of like Greg Holman's. Like, I don't know if you guys know Greg and, and yeah. New Jersey based DJ. A couple years ago, he was known for coming up with all these different types of cocktail playlists. Like you wanted a style. He had it right. This is nice. kind of in that in that frame, but then it also kind of flushes out. Also gives you some that are a little bit different, a little bit outside the box type of thing, or covers that keep it fresh. Um, and you can pick that up. That was an, an Amazon buy as well. Um, that's how he's selling it. I think there's a Kindle version as well. But nice. Um, same idea, you know, and, and really easy. And then you can just fill your fill your list. Excellent, excellent. That's that sounds good. Yeah, I didn't even realize that was out. Huh. You learn something every day. All right, we're going to jump to our next question. Next question tonight is talking about how you sell your services from the standpoint, do you break things down into a la carte where people can check of what they want, or do you have packages, pre, pre-established packages of what you're going to be offering? This is something that Personally, I've gone back and forth on this, and I'm really kind of interested to hear how Dan and uh, Cubby, how you guys handle this. So, Dan, what are you what are you doing these days? And and I I want to add what you're doing and why, because the why is is can be the interesting part. So I used to do packages, I and and I had I had my three packages and and everything else, and I never really seemed to have a lot of success with with the package selling um i had i would have couples who would be interested in parts and and not really the whole package or a little bit of this package a little bit and so i was always constantly trying to change it up to to match with what um i was getting that interest from so i have now switched to basically a baseline which is um reception or reception ceremony and then everything else is is a la carte now i'll give you know, discounts if they if they buy multiple a la carte items, almost like a mini package. Um, but what I found as a result, because I also didn't have, I wasn't a full production company, so I didn't have, you know, 8,000 things to try and throw at them. So making multiple packages also kind of got confusing. So I went back to a la carte because one, I just found what they were buying. It was much easier. I just, I what do you want? Let's Let's make that happen. Um, as well as just not having a ton of options, it was simpler for me to just get rid of the package thought. Interesting. Cubby, what's your thoughts on this? I've got two packages. I got the couple that's getting married at a church and coming to reception, and I got an all-inclusive ceremony and reception package. All my other uplights, uh, audio guest book, photo book, those are all add-ons. Officiating, those are all add-ons. But when I talk to a bride, I say, you know, this is what we got. We have unlimited hours up to seven hours. <laughs> I hope none of my brides are watching. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they watch our show. This is a big, big night. They're like, hey, everybody, quick. Come uh, my DJ's going to be on News. Um, so my two packages are uh, unlimited hours up to seven. And it encompasses ceremony sound, includes a pal mic, handheld mic if you need it, just basically what you need for reception. Yeah. And then I've got my one for the bride and groom. And I explained to him, it's like, it's the reason we do this is like McDonald's. You go to McDonald's, you can buy value meal number one, two, three, four, five, or you can a la carte it. It's going to be more expensive if you a la carte it. So then I raise my five hour price <laughs> so that I'm making more on my reception only package. I mean, we talked a couple weeks ago, Dan was like, I feel always got cheated because I was doing all these other packages. But I wasn't making much on my five hours. So I raised my five hour. So it looks like a no brainer when they're getting married at a church to take my unlimited package. Sure. 
and they love it. I'm like, look, we're fully transparent. This is everything you need out the door, no questions asked. No financial surprises at the end. I said, because you're going to have some financial surprises. It could be the alcohol, the, floor, the florist, the cater. Oh, yeah. It could be any of those. With ours, you know what it is. You know, we're not going to meet with you and go, oh, by the way, you need an extra hour. And I wasn't banking on that extra hour or whatever. So it seems to close for me. But, yeah, that amount of production company either. But I do have a few add-ons, uplights, um, officiating, uh, audio guest book, photo book. But I've never put those into a package, you know, like $3,000 package. I focus solely, mainly on DJing, and then everything else is just an error. The one thing that I would caution anybody getting into, the one thing that I feel is is kind of a, a, a potential trap for yourself, is to break down the a la carte to a la carte within the a la carte. And what I mean by that is, like, I'm going to do uplighting, so I'm going to charge you by the uplight. Or I'm going to do photo booth so i'm going to charge you by every little thing within the photo booth now what you know whether you break it down in your head and that's how you come up with your price that's a different story but i wouldn't necessarily put it out there for the couple so when i when they get my a la carte and they decide that they want to do up lighting it's for the room and it's what it takes me to make that look the way that it should look so if i need 10 or if i need 20 that's what I need to do to do the job. So I base it upon the job and the service, not the pieces within the service. Just because I, I, I feel like it's too nitpicky or, or too nickel and dimey if I, if I do it otherwise. I With my uplights, they're 30 bucks a head. You decide how many you want. Do you just want five for the backdrop or do you want to cover the whole room? So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I've, I get what you're saying, and I said, but I just do like it's thirty bucks a head. You tell me what you want. There you go. You know, um, and I don't know. I just know. I yeah. I don't. What we do. Everybody does stuff different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. John. So my variation of this is I've done packages. I've done a la carte uh, where it was full checklist. Then I could go through and check things. Um, I've done three packages. I've done five packages. Whatever. I've, I've taken. The, the the approach recently of a kind of combining the two, and it's similar to probably what Cubby is talking about with having the upsell or the additions that they can add to it. But I've, I've kind of looked at it as like a Tuesday night burger night at the local bar. You can go in there, and it's burger night. Yay! And you go, I'll have a burger. And and they're, they're like, yes, and would you like anything on that? And it's like, well, what's included? Well, it's a burger and a bun and a pickle. That's it. Well, I would kind of like you know cheese and oh that's great that would be a dollar oh okay well you know i kind of like bacon i don't like making bacon at home because it stinks up the house can i get a bacon cheeseburger oh yes that'll be another two dollars oh, okay well you know if i'm really splurging this much i might as well get an egg on top of that because that is awesome and they're like yes i can do that and that'll be and then you know I need it to be healthy. How about some lettuce and tomato on that? Because that'll make it healthier. And they'll be, yes, sir. And that'll be another $2. So I all of a sudden have a $15 to $20 cheeseburger coming at me you know, from the $2 hamburger night at the local bar. Following a sim similar concept where basically the package is is dependent upon uh, time, really, uh, and, and lighting as far as sound and, and the sound and lighting side of it, and then having some additional things that are available. And it's it's been interesting here so far with the booking season is that I have 20 different uh, additions. I just went through and just anything. It's like, oh, wait, um, you know, if I'm going to point my microphones to the east, I can charge extra for that and that kind of a thing. So I've had, I had just every little thing that we've done over the last number of years has is, is got a price point to it. And it's as people have gone through, they're like, yeah, hey, I want it. I want that. I would. Somebody else obviously did at one time, but I didn't think it would be something that anyone would ever take. So that's why it had never been on my sheets until now. And it's uh, you know I just today uh, today I had a, 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 a you know, like a, a close to a four thousand dollar package that or a proposal that went out, and it started out as a two thousand dollar you know hamburger that worked its way up to nearly four thousand dollars. So it's it's uh, it's been yeah Brian I figured you'd kind of like that. And this is how I could write off that cheeseburger we had when we were in you know Wisconsin together that last time, um, but. Uh, it, it seems to work, um, and maybe it won't work in a year and a half. It, I think a lot of it depends on how, how the economy goes and how people are viewing making purchases. I think that has a lot to do with it. And it might also become, Mike, it might also be dependent upon my 
ability to be comfortable selling it and to be able to talk uh, excited about excitedly about it. If it's something that I'm getting to the point where I'm burned out selling like that, maybe then I won't be pushing it or showing that excitement for it. And people will be like, oh, that doesn't sound as good. But then I can be excited next year, you know, two years when I go, it's an all-inclusive package, everything you've ever wanted, you know. And they'll be like, hey, there's this guy down in, in, in Iowa that sells an all-inclusive package too. But he's much prettier than you, so we're going to go with him. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, but I, I, mine is, here's everything you need for your reception ceremony, right? And then everything else, I let them work themselves up to the audio guest book, the phone, rather than yeah. just throwing it off. Because not every bride, bride wants an audio guest book and they may not want a photo booth or it might be conducive to have up lights at their venue um, or whatever. So I don't want to throw it in unless they want it. So here's everything you need for your reception. Out of the door. No questions asked. Yep. And then if you want to do some other things, hey, here they are. And, and, I have and they work themselves up and then the, it's easy. It's pretty, sometimes it's easy to add on. So. Really, really, uh, really is kind of a, a, a definite, uh, definite enhancer. And it also shows for the people who are like, yeah, no, I'm good for today. And then all of a sudden they come back six months later and say, you know, we decided that we want, you know, X, Y, and Z. Well, you saw my, my sheets, what X, Y, and Z costs. And we do have it and we can get you hooked up. Nice. All right, I think we're ready for our next question here. Let's jump to that. Our next question is from someone who's wondering what they should add to their DJ speaking of additions. Uh, should a person add cold sparks, low lying fog, uh, hazers, uh, CO2 cannons? There's a lot of cool things that we see out there that some DJs are using. Would you recommend, now this might be even for someone who's a little more seasoned. I don't know if a DJ just starting out would want to invest in these things, but you never know. But would you recommend those for someone who, for someone's business? And, and what would be some variables for them to consider when thinking about this? I think I, is it my turn? I think to start? so. I think so. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, for me, I, I have not invested in the cold spark machines because I do a lot of barns and they are, they won't let me have them. So we do a lot of you know ceremony reception barn places, not too many industrial places. If I, uh, we had a great market, DJ market here in Des Moines, that if I needed them, I have friends that would rent them to me, um, finding that they're available. Um, so I, I didn't have to go into that investment. Um, I never did get into the low lying fog, same thing. People are nervous, venues are nervous, but it's gonna make the haze go off and fire people come. And you can explain it to them all you want, but they just see that somebody's before you has come in and screwed it up for everybody, yep. you know, and now they have a bad taste in their mouth. So, um, and then also we're in my location. Um, people are very simple. Uh, I, I mean, I live in the Midwest. I live in Iowa, I'm the center of Iowa. Um, and a lot of them are just not doing it. Um, because there's not a lot of people in our market that are doing it. So, um, they're, they just, they'd rather buy a keg of bush light than they would spend money on sparklers. So for me and my market, it's not good. But if it's if it's like if you're in the East Coast and you know every family tries to up each other in bar mitzvahs and weddings and you know all that and your family and each family trying to up the other one, by goodness, get it for you if you think you could sell it. Mm -hmm. But they are all major investments. Yeah, they they definitely are. And and I I would say that's nothing I've added on either. I, there's different times I've like, oh, they're really cool. I need to try and get those because I just I want them, right? I want to be the one who does it. I want to I wanted to go off and my setup be in the background, right? Like that's the thought that goes into my mind. Um, and if if that's where you're at with it, my my immediate answer is don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Like if that's why you're doing it, don't do it. Um, if you, if you have couples, so the things to consider is, do you have couples that are asking about it? So for example, I was talking to with a friend of mine who's up in the Erie area and he was telling me that, you know, one of his investments that he thinks is coming up this year is going to be doing the cold sparks. And I said, really? I said, you know, you kind of were, you didn't really move on those yet. I kind of expected if you were going to do it, you would have done it like at least a year and a half ago. And he goes, I have two couples that have reached out to me and they need it like it's almost to that point and he's like i threw out a figure and they didn't even hesitate and i said are you using like multiple times a night he said no just the introductions and i was just baffled so if you have couples that are asking about it i think that also kind of helps it's not it's not quite to the old idea of you sell it and then you go buy it 
but you have interest that you have people that are showing interest in it and then you're doing but some things that you definitely need to consider and Cubby even mentioned it is the venues that you play in the ones that you're playing in most often do they allow things like this right we know you know we you can take the cold sparks and if you buy the proper ones you know that you can stick your hand right in it and it's not going to light anything on fire you're not going to get burned nobody's going to get hurt it's going to look awesome and you're going to be fine but as he said you have somebody who either doesn't care about that and is always worried about what could happen or they've had bad experience or they've seen the bad experience youtube videos and they're whatever like, not in my venue right so think about the stuff that's at the venue, not just the cold sparks, but the haze or the low lying fog or anything else. The other couple pieces that you want to you want to go into, especially with like the low lying fog, that typically that's using dry ice. How available is dry ice to where you're at? Right? Can is that something that you can pick up on a Saturday? Like let's say you're doing a Saturday wedding, is that something you can pick up Saturday morning on your way to the event, or is the places that sell it? Are they closed Friday? Well, now you have to buy a bigger amount so that it you can keep it in a cooler long enough so that when you need it on Saturday, it's it's going to be there. Like these are things that go into those pieces that also you all also have to realize is who's going with you? Is this something you're doing by yourself? Some of these require you to drop the ice at a certain time to get the effect that you wanted. Well, is that are you going to be doing something else when that's going on? Yeah. Right. If it's just pushing a button and making things happen, okay, I think we can do that and talk at the same time. But if it's other things that need to happen along that way, you might now need somebody else to come along. That's another potential thing to think about. Um, and then to the CO2 cannons, I think they're kind of cool. I think that, you know, that's something that's probably a little everybody could do on their own. But does that fit your personality? Is that does that fit who you are in your clientele? Because if they're not your clientele, like if the type of couples that would think that's awesome and look really cool shooting off the co2 cannon if that's not the type of couples you typically bring in you might not you might have a hard time selling sorry that was really really long no you're good you're good oh that's great so you guys remember the confetti cannons and the confetti at the trade shows where they would throw in their whole areas were just a mess uh, cubby i know you've seen those uh, at the at the <laughs> And I really look at it kind of like that, is that uh, when those things came out in the early 2000s and it was like, oh, my gosh, you know, schools wanted these confetti things and, and weddings wanted these for the inner. And after you used them once in a venue, you became blacklisted. It was like, yep, you're not coming back. You make that kind of mess in my place. You hang that that's that stuff up in the rafters or the and uh, yeah, you're not coming back. I think that, that a lot of this stuff is going to be this, that way. Um, so, again, knowing your venues is obviously important. Second thing or the most from my perspective can you get your return on your money? And it, some people can, most of us can't. I think Brian's Brian's answer was probably the most accurate. No, and go to the next question. Um, for ninety percent of you, no, go to the next. We'll go to the next question. Uh, there's going to be some people who can weigh it out and have an opportunity, but I know some people in larger areas. Uh, I've got a friend who's uh, in New York. And he's bought, I think, seven or eight Cold Spark sets of Cold Spark machines for DJs in rural areas, like my area, who bought them and were going to sell them. And then, of course, I didn't. And then they end up selling them for, for pennies on the dollar. And he's using them in a large metro in the New York area where he can use those for that one moment. And people will happily pay for it because they were trying to you know, show up or whatever, show off or whatever. So if you can't make the money on it, it's a bad idea. All right, let's jump to our next question here for tonight. So the next question, this is going to tie into Bill Herman's uh, video from today. So if you're watching this later, uh, Bill Herman did a video talking a little bit about, uh, about understanding and reading the room. Uh, and that's what somebody was asking. How do you do that? They've heard that phrase. What are some of the things you look at or how do you do it or how would you teach it if it comes to reading the room and maybe even what does that mean to you? Dan, I think you get to start this one. So so this is people watching 101. It, it really is. So reading the room is, is immediately as something is playing, you're, you're looking for any types of signs that things are, are favorable or, or not favorable, I guess, would be, you know, where you're not hoping that direction, but, but that's going to give you an indication of where they might go later, right? So, you, so you, you pick a song that might be on the fringe of a Motown song, and you're using it during cocktails or something like that. You weave it in. 
and you as that's playing you're watching the guest reaction do you have people that are you know kind of like start bobbing their head a little bit okay or you know some toe tapping they're not dancing yet this is not a dancing time yet um but you're looking for those moments and those signs that things are going well and then you know check that box in your in your head that i can use something along that lines later on and typically that person and that person who responded well to this they're probably going to be in my pocket later on when i go to use it for for something else um the other idea is and that's typically what i'm talking about with reading the room during like cocktails or dinner uh when you go into the dancing portion again start looking for your guests looking do you see energy levels start to wane do you see something on the dance floor like everybody's going all out but man all of a sudden they're in this song and it's like they were going hard but now they're kind of like starting to die it's time to change the song. It's time to get out of that song. Maybe change the styles. Maybe rotate your dance floor, right? That's kind of a weird concept for some of us wedding DJs, right? Because club guys are like, yeah, we got to rotate the floor. We got to get them up to buy more drinks. But sometimes wedding DJs, we need to do the same. Give them a chance to get that breather, to get that energy back and pull that other group up to the dance floor and kind of ebb and flow it with that way. I think he kind of covered it. Yeah, right. I... <laughs> I don't know. At, at I will say that that's what I've done. Like that, when it comes to when it comes to reading the room, that is like there there are some DJ skills that I'm like, eh. When it comes to reading the room, that's something I've taken pride in in focusing on and learning from the get go because that's how I learned before I could ever really learn to mix well. I relied on my people watching skills to to get me through. For sure, Cubby. So. When you've, you've been training uh, DJs and specifically your daughter has gotten into it, how yeah. did you, how did you convey that need to be able to do that to her? Because I've, I've been the same boat with Michael here. Yeah, it's like an instinct. It's like, you know, you can go hard fast, like, you know, like, like Dan talked about and you peter them out. So they got to go slow down and take a drink because you went, or maybe you played one genre, one song too long. And, you know, you just kind of, you like, you just watch them and in over 18 years and over thousands of weddings or events, you know, you just kind of watch and, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, I went a little hard on that one because they were going hard themselves. You like, you know, you keep the BPMs high. Uh, but DJ Scribble um, set of grades. It's, it's a, 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 an event is peaks and valleys. You bring them up and then you bring them down and you bring them right back up again. And that's where you have them right in your hand. And it might be playing that slow song so you can swap genres so they can go catch your breath. And, you know, you've lost the guys, but you've got all the girls out there for a really long time. So you play slow song and they go grab their guys and you come out with another three, four bangers. Um, Mike Walter also had another uh, during one of his programming in uh, programming uh, seminars. Uh, seminars. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Um, he uses a formula. I think it's three, five, three, three, and it's Greg. I need to go back and rewatch it. But you play three genre, three songs of a certain BPM genres, and then move on, um, not worrying out a certain genre, but you can always revisit it, you know, and bring it back, put it in your pocket, and bring it back. Um, but Dan nailed it on the head. He's, he's takes a while you learn it and you you're going to make mistakes sometimes you're going to go hard you're going to play that one genre song too long and then you're just like yeah I did it <laughs> yep and you just come back and you just and then you learn it with experience there's, there, there's you're not going to come out the gate with it and for sure and that was that's probably the biggest thing I tell when I'm talking to Michael about it is the experience needed and and how I was fortunate that a lot of that cutting of the teeth when it came to being able to uh, you know watch the crowd was done in a bar situation where I was playing four or five nights a week. So if I screwed it up one night, I could come back the next night and try it again. A different crowd probably, some of the same people maybe, but you could try it again and uh, see what worked. And you just repetition and playing and knowing, okay, maybe now I don't go as far into the song. I get out of it here instead. That, you know, back in the early days, you played the entire song. You didn't short mix out. You yeah. didn't go course to course or second course out. So yeah, it's a, it, it's a whole new whole new new game today you know with uh with the uh, people's attention spans being as short as they are and wanting you know tiktok and they wanted just to bang you know just that one part that was very famous on tiktok and then you're mixing out of it or something yeah the world we're in today all right let's jump to our next question so for the next question someone was asking about 
the uh, gear side of things, when they were going out and wanting to get invest in speakers and things, should they go and buy a name brand? Uh, Electro Voice is one of our sponsors here. Do they go out and buy the Electro Voice Evolve 50, or do they go and find something on Amazon? Because there's many type of mini array systems there that look somewhat like it, or look like they could be similar to, and they're a lot cheaper. When someone has that that kind of a question. Where do you go with that? Uh, wh what are your, some of your thoughts to advise him? And I think, Dan, are you starting this one or is Cubby? It's Cubby. Cubby. It's Cubby first. Though. Cubby. Oh, uh, you guys know my, my theory on speakers with lights inside of them. Um, <laughs> yes, he loves them. <laughs> yes. Um, I would go ahead and invest in, in, an, in a name brand. Uh, I myself love Electro Voice and EVs, but um, there are some other great brands out there that are a little lower price points. And maybe you don't have to buy the newer model. Maybe you start off with an older model. Um, that may have been refurbished. Um, you can find some of those um, through Guitar Center and or uh, Sweetwater maybe. Um, ben may have some refurbished one. But maybe you start with a refurbished, but maybe not the newest model. But try to stay with something that's familiar, um, not the things that have lights in the middle of them. Um, and then and then invest, you know, and, and research. Research. Do your research. Um, and, and like I said, try to invest. Because if they can't hear you or if the sound is horrible, you, you, you know, same thing with the microphone. They can, the two major investments, microphone and speakers, because those are the ones that people have got to be able to hear you clearly, distinctly, um, and you got to be able to reach the room. And I know we talked about 15, 12s. I would go with 15s because um, you can always you can always bring it down so you can do the larger events. You can do the larger weddings with 15s, where if you had a 12, you would limit yourself or maybe push them too hard or something. But that's what that's just, again, one man, one guy's opinion. And there's a lot of them to do, but I would I would look at a refurbished model and stick with name brands. Dan, what are your thoughts? So, so there's the adage "buy once, cry once," right? And and that's what you'll hear from a lot of lot of people. You know, make the investment. It, yes, it, it means you're going to be spending more on on whatever. But as a result, when it's all said and done, that that product, whatever it is, whether it's speakers, mics, you know, lights, whatever, is going to last you a lot longer. Um, more often than not, than the stuff that you get on Amazon. Um, I will say, you know, I when I was starting out, it was it was very hard. And my in fact, my first, I still remember my first backup speakers were something I got from what was PSSL, I think was the Pro Sound, like out yeah. in California. They it was they were they had bought like a ton of these knockoffs of some store, and they like unloaded them, and I got like two speakers for three hundred dollars, and they were my backups, and I and but they sounded and they sounded like crap. But I had backups. Um, but what I would recommend is definitely definitely staying away from the, from the Amazon idea. Um, if you're if you're on a budget, most of the professional lines have different levels, right? They, you know, there there's you don't have to buy the ETX, right? You could buy the ZLX or the EKX or you know those kind of things, um, and and step yourself down to to something that might be in your price budget, regardless of the line that you look at. Uh, I think that's going to be your better option. You have the backing, you have the research. These are people that support the industry. And then I'm going to make the one comment that that sometimes gets overlooked, but it's one of the funniest things, I think, when it comes to DJs. We want our couples to spend as much as possible on us when they're when they're buying our services, but yet we turn around and try and find the cheapest amount of gear that we can. Right? If if you're I'm not saying that you have to go out and, and buy you know, by the Cadillac of, of speakers, but in the same respect, like if you're expecting your clients to spend on you, you should be willing to spend on yourself. And going back to that, our, we don't have a monthly investment. You know what I'm saying? Except for maybe subscriptions. When you buy your equipment, my EV evolves. I, I bought the first black pair when they first came out. His last me, what, six years now? How long have they been out? Now I got white ones because it matches my system better. But you're not buying equipment over and over and over again, weekly, monthly, yearly, even unless you do something to them. So you're not going into that major investment. You 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 buy it, take care of it, bag it up, take great care of it. It's gonna it's gonna support you for a really really long time. That you don't have to you know other businesses uh, have food and produce and something that, that rots and we don't have that. We've got all of our equipment. We can, we can use it for a good five six years. We have to re refurb it or change it. So I'd like to add one one side of it is I think there are times for you to go buy that that speaker from Amazon. That time that you're looking for a a inexpensive 
disposable speaker, and you're really not caring. Uh, you've got one event that you're going to use it for, and you really don't care if it gets wet and dies, if it gets blown up, or if it sounds the greatest. You just need something to make sound. I think there are legitimate times where a an inexpensive whatever could could function. I think you could probably find something better maybe than than, um, but there are times. Uh, the biggest difference that you see between a an array uh, type system that's that's on Amazon from from a, uh, a direct from Chinese seller and the Electro Voice, um, the Evolve Fifties is going to be talking about the warranty and the longevity and the components that are put in there and how how they're designed to be used on a regular basis. The Evolve 50s or the Everse 8s, these things are used are meant to be used at, at a functional volume level. Many of these little systems that we see these at NAM, we were seeing these at NAM and reporting on them four, five, six, seven years ago. And they were they were interesting looking, but when they're running a little like 22 gauge wire from the sub to the tops, and there's four tops up there, these four little that's not that's not much for wiring. And yes, that you don't need a ton of wire to carry signals, but they're not anticipating these things being pushed very hard. They're not designing them to be pushed very hard because they're disposable. So if you're looking for that, there's a place for you to find that. If you're going to be doing this, go back to the Dan's, Dan's, uh, you know, cry the buy once and cry once and, and be good. Okay. I think we got, I I th there's one more that I want to hit. We're going to do our last question. And then after this, Howie's gone tonight. So we're going to be going djntv.com uh, slash chill. We'll be going to that. And we're going to be doing a show tonight. And Brian's going to be there. So Brian, I, I've got a topic that I want you and I to hit tonight. So uh, if you can if you can hang with me, we'll do that one with the uh, hanging with Howie tonight. Um, we'll be back with our next question. All right, our last question of tonight is somebody was asking about what happens if you have a family emergency. Something happens 24 hours before your event, you know, really last minute, and you f have this this major thing going on, you know, that uh, a, a car accident, something horrible it, it, with your immediate family. How, uh, how, what do you do to be prepared for something like that, and how do you deal with it? Who's who's up? Network, network, network. Like like that's that's the key. Like like it's so funny. You know, a lot of the professionals they they recognize, and some of their closest friends are the DJs that are in their market. And and you know, and some and some DJs when they're starting out, it's like I can't be friends with them; they're my competition. Yeah, but if things go south in some form or fashion, they're the ones that are bailing you out. So so networking with them and and having those backups in line are are going to be key. At some point, the 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 next step to go would be to make sure that you have an assistant that is with you and that you can train them so that if they needed to take over for you, they could make it through the night, right? So, so that you have kind of a backup of the backup plan, because I know right now, like if I was to reach out to my, my key, my key people for a Saturday in October, more, more specifically the first two weekends in October, um, I, I think I'd be SOL. Like, I just, I think there's just no way that that would be able to happen. Right. So you, you have to have some of those, but I would also say that your emergency should be an emergency. Like you're like, I, you know, my, this is my philosophy and, and maybe I'm different, but my dad passed away on a Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. I DJ an event Friday night because I wasn't going to leave the the client and this was not a wedding. This was just an event. I was not going to leave them hanging. That was my personal opinion. That's where I stand. Um, and, and I would have something taken care of for the affairs and I would move on to whatever it is that I needed to do in that moment. Uh, we, I've missed two weddings. Um, one I had surgery and I uh, coded out and ended up in ICU and lost four days. So I had to have somebody cover. Um, the other one is I had COVID. So during the pandemic, we would only, we're a small multi-op. And so during the pandemic, we'd only put three DJs out in the event that somebody caught COVID. Uh, so we'd have one in the reserve. Um, but definitely like Dan, a network market within your uh, within your company. Do, hey, if you can, 
I bailed somebody out this uh, this year uh, in September, had a cancellation, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to enjoy the Saturday off. Um, a friend of mine called me, says, hey, our DJ um, is being life flighted to the hospital. We don't know what's going on. Can you cover? I'm like, yeah, no problem. Overperformed. I mean, more than they had promised. Um, but you be there for them as they're there for you if you can help them out. Um, and uh, the guy ended up, ended up passing away, and I gave all my money to that bro- that that DJ's family. So the guy don't need to make anything that night; just give it to his family. Um, things happen. Couples are very understanding. Um, but again, I'm, I'm like Dan. Is the only time I miss was a I had COVID, and b I, I was in ICU, so I couldn't come out. Um, but just have backups and great friends that can help you out. For sure, for sure. And the idea that. That there are times, in, and people are talking in the chat room about uh, you know doing events similar to what Dan's, Dan, after a, a uh, tragedy in the family, is that uh, sometimes it's just, and there's not, there's certain situations where you can't put on the uh, performance face and and go through. There's something that's just happened that you're you're a wreck, but many a times that we just have to put on that game face. We have to go out there and smile like it's uh, the greatest day of our lives, and inside we've got a lot of hurt. And we just need to make it through. And once we get to the other side, then we can we can deal with it and process. John, I'm really surprised that you didn't say just have like eight kids that are just going to all be DJs. <laughs> Isn't that what you're up to now? Well, you, yeah, you've that, got that, like a football team. That, you're playing that, that pretty much is, is the thing. And I have been training them. Yes. So, so I've got the, actually they did. The boys did their first uh, first solo wedding that they were traveling it was a pretty big wedding so it wasn't you know i mean they've done done of weddings around the area here but this is one where they had to they had to be completely self-contained there was no way to you know it's kind of like a mission to mars there's no way to send us uh, if you don't have it packed you don't have it type of a thing and it, and they uh, did wonderfully and everything went well with that but it was it's uh yeah getting to the point where i become the uh, the backup for them i guess i don't know yeah, my daughter's way cooler than I am too, so I get it. Yeah, that's for sure. That that happens once we get to our age, you know. When we hit thirty five, you know, it just was downhill last week. Okay, so uh, next djntv.com slash chill. Howie is up in northern New York and they're doing a, a, a festival up there and doing lighting for that with Eric. Uh, so it's I've seen some great pictures. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. You guys will get to hear about that next week because Howie's off for this week. So um, I'll be jumping into the chill room here in just a little bit with, uh, I think Brian's going to join me and we're going to, we have one question that is a Brian Red type question. I think we're going to have some fun with that. So uh, we're going to jump in with that. Um, and then tomorrow night uh, we'll have the music show, uh, the the recording of the mu- music show at ten o'clock Eastern, the re- uh, stream of one of the music shows at nine o'clock Eastern, and Wednesday we'll be uh, running one of the streams from the Hanging with Howie, which are recorded every Monday at ten o'clock Eastern at dgntv.com/chill. So, I think we're good. Okay. Well, on that note, thank you very much for taking time on your Monday night to join us. Hopefully you got some of your questions answered. And if not, we were keeping track of the chat. We'll jot them in. And next time we have a Q&A, we'll try and get to your question. But have yourself a great night. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.